on the special ed side with the fixed costs in terms of the controllability that the school department has on that uh, item. To date, Mike, it hasn't been discussed, although the superintendent did send an email uh, suggesting that. But uh, this was just, you know, in the past week. Yes, sir. The uh, revenue stream from the uh, Hillview Commission, uh, is that a substantial income? And I know for now it's locked up, but was there a finite time when that would be able to be applied to other areas other than specifically recreation? Or is that correct? It, it's, it's locked up as you know, basically the enterprise is charged for the preservation of the aquifer for us, the management of the golf course, which is the the revenue stream and recreation. Um, there's discussions underway, and I think you're going to hear some tonight associated with uh, utilizing that money for a purpose related to school fields. Uh, keep in mind that the Hillview Commission pays, makes a payment to the town in lieu of taxes based on the assessed value of the Hillview property and Ipswich River Park. So it's not like no revenue comes into the town based on that engine. Okay? Any more questions? Boy, this is an easy group tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'll just one more question. Just a quick question. You mentioned about the financial advisory committee and the that they come on some ideas. Have you guys ever heard of that kind of thing yet that maybe you might be able to be turned around in the short term and that it might be valid? Uh, so, Mike? Can you comment? Sorry, I was reading some of your questions. No, I was just trying to, I was wondering if there was anything that had been identified that you guys could <coughs> be turned around at all in the short amount of time that we could do that and develop a solid against the city of the zone. Well, we've looked, our, we've looked over about 60 different ideas, and we, we have presented only a handful to the board of selectmen. But nothing right now that we can put on the table. Everything that we thought we could do, we have presented and has been turned down. Um, I don't think it affects 2010 yet, but we're still working. We haven't given up on it. We're still meeting at CBS. We're still doing a lot of research. We've been spending a lot of our time right now looking at the current contracts that are in place today. We have a great opportunity with the town. A lot of them are up for renewal right now. And this is the owner says a big job ahead of them. Unfortunately, he has to do at least three or four different contracts at the same time. We have been trying to help him by spending some time doing research. We think there's significant savings that we can make, not only for 2010, but and beyond, that are very important. That's what we're listening to. That's thinking back. One, one of the things it brought forth is, but it, it also came from a bunch of different directions of health insurance and making affordable changes there. By the way, the changes that we made, the town pays 70% of the health insurance, the employees pay 30 so any savings that are made in the cost of health insurance is shared 70 30. So the employees get a uh, savings too. Now there's arguments over, well, if you're making a change to the plan, but the plan design you can actually come up with you know, plans that serve our employees to a level that's reasonable and they can enjoy a little bit of the savings. Of course, it crossed 100%. Obviously, some people are affected more than others depending on their specific needs. <coughs> Someone in the back, yes. Yeah, uh, I just pulled the six question and drive. Um, I want to second something that was said, you know, commend you guys for, for the work that you've done. Um, certainly a challenge in this environment. It's a challenge every year, but it's definitely a challenge in this environment. I mean, these are really are unprecedented times that uh, hopefully we'll never have to see again after we get through this. Um, but that, that being said, it, to me, there's something fundamentally wrong with state government and local government if we can't be funding the basic services um, every year. The, I mean, education, sending our kids to school five days a week versus four and a half. I mean, that shouldn't be driven by how well the economy is doing. Last year, I mean, um, Mr. Chairman, you said that, you know, we had to do some extraordinary one-time things just to put that money back into the school department. And that was when a year was that, that was a good economic year. There's something wrong with that, that we can't be funding education for kids, regardless of what the economy is. So, you know, I think we, you know, as uh, Mr. Gallagher said, 
we do have to look at priorities. We, we have to force ourselves to prioritize whether it is this, uh, the 60-40 or the 70-30 split, whatever, whatever it is, we have to look at all the resources that we've had, whether it's the benchmarking reports, um, the, the files that are on the website at the state that shows that we have a, you know, near the bottom in the state as far as per pupil expenditures. We have to be looking at that before we decide how we allocate our cuts. So, thank you. The town uh, <clears throat> did engage in discussions with its employees relative to the GIC. We began those discussions last spring. Um, they were concluded this, uh, this winter. They were not fruitful. We were unable to reach agreement. The, uh, the law on the GIC requires that there be agreement of at least 70% of the municipal employee unions. Uh, we're unable to reach agreement. It's not that um, uh, there were a lot of questions that came up in the, in the course of discussions about the GIC, and it was pretty clear that there were a lot of things that a lot of facts were unknown relative to the GIC program going forward. Um, those concerns kind of translated into, into our discussions, and what we really ended up doing was uh, looking at an existing health insurance provider and working with them to provide options that are similar to the GIC. Um, however, um, we're trying to do that within the, within the constraints of dealing with our existing insurance carrier versus jumping directly to the GIC. Um, we would uh, hope that we would engage in further discussions going forward. It's quite structured in terms of how we have to handle this type of negotiation on health insurance, but um, I think as the uh, chairman mentioned, we're, we're pleased to offer our employees in the town uh, a couple of alternatives going forward that could result in us uh, having level funding on health insurance um, from fiscal 2009 to 2010. And I would suggest that change that takes place where agreement is required of our employees is probably um, going to be handled on an incremental basis. My understanding is there is a proposal that's pending that the governor filed as part of his municipal relief package legislation that would um, take the requirement from 70% to 50 plus 1 or 51%. Uh, my understanding is that is what the governor has offered. Um, however, my view is what's really needed is um, the state has the ability to do something called plan design. The town does not have a right to implement um, plan design changes unless engages and reaches agreement with its unions. Um, the state doesn't have to adhere to that. So um, part of our challenge is dealing with um, insurance programs and then trying to negotiate things like uh, co office co-payments going from $5 to $15. That's, that's a negotiation process, whereas the state can simply just go ahead and do it.